So hello everyone, my name is Lynn Lopez. I am from Loma Linda University School of Pharmacy. I am a DI coordinator. DI stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And I'm here to present to you about our program and also in general, what is pharmacy? So the first part is going to be a video, a snapshot of our one of our alums explaining uh, her experience through pharmacy. Well, let me make sure I shared the sound actually. Pharmacists are the most accessible members of the healthcare team. We're just a phone call away, and really our goal is just to make our patients' lives better. I came about choosing pharmacy because I knew that it was a healthcare profession where I would be speaking to my patients often, um, and I would be kind of a liaison or the person that ties all of the healthcare professions together, so the nurses and the doctors. After high school, you complete four years of undergrad and then four years of pharmacy school, and at that point, you graduate with a doctor of pharmacy degree. Having a degree that's not science is not necessarily vital to becoming a pharmacist. You can get a degree in business or economics or marketing, things like that. And those might even help you to choose what path you go while you're in pharmacy. Once you're done with pharmacy school, you can work in the retail setting or community pharmacy setting. You could work in a hospital. You could work in academia. You could work in pharmaceutical industry or for insurance companies. There are a lot of career options once you're done with this degree. In order to be a pharmacist, you'd have to have a lot of attention to detail. You would have to want to learn all the time because pharmacy is always changing. As a pharmacist, we are um, not just counting pills. We are a very important part of the healthcare team. No matter what, the drug has to go through you. You're the final check. And so their safety is your responsibility. Financially, pharmacy is definitely rewarding. It is expensive to go to pharmacy school, but if you are looking for a career that will keep you financially stable down the line, pharmacy is a great option. So like mentioned in the video by one of our alumni, there's a variety of different career paths you can go with pharmacy from your traditional route, which is like a community pharmacy, which is like your CVS, Walgreens, or Rite Aid, or even Costco pharmacy, um, to a hospital setting. So there's different pathways you can go with this career. It's also very flexible. It's like an eight to five job. So if you want to have a family, this is the perfect career path. Uh, you'll have time to spend time with them. Also, earnings are really good, and there's no requirement for you to go far into residency unless you want to specialize in a certain field. It's also, it's a career that continues to keep growing, especially after COVID. Uh, there's been a lot of different areas that you can go with pharmacy, including investigation, for example, and you'll be part of the healthcare uh, team uh, without actually looking at guts or blood. So why do we need pharmacists? So pharmacists are the med um, medication experts. So you would be the one educating physicians and nurses and anybody else part of the healthcare team on how drugs should be taken. You'll also be there to advocate for patients um, and make sure that you reduce any errors of anything that has been prescribed. So you'll be able to collaborate with not only physicians and nurses, but anybody else within a healthcare environment. So now we're gonna go over the different practice settings. The first one, as I mentioned, is community pharmacy. Again, it's your CVS or Walgreens. Um, you'll be able to assist the members right on the spot without them actually making any appointments with you. So you'll be able to give advice to them. Um, in comparison, like going to see a doctor, you'll have to book an appointment. So this is uh, uh, the main part of community pharmacy. And then we also have infectious diseases. So in this uh, pathway or setting, you would be there in charge to make sure all medications are prescribed 
are correct, and also to make sure that the patient goes from being sick to healthy. And then we also have investigational drugs and research, meaning you would perform clinical trials. So if you enjoy writing papers or just writing in general, this would be a great career because it involves a lot of writing guidelines and different procedures for new medications. And lastly, we have critical care. So in critical care, if you enjoy a fast paced working environment, this would be a great pathway as well. It, it is in the hospital and you would be giving uh, medical advice right on the spot, fast paced. Um, this would be usually in, for example, ICU. In the next video, we'll have Dr. Justin Kenny, who is in this field and will explain to you a little bit more what it's like to be a critical care pharmacist. In any hospital now, there is typically an emergency room, plus or minus several ICUs, where they house patients for these complex problems. There's life-threatening infections called sepsis and septic shock. And what they found is that there's direct mortality increase from delaying antibiotic therapy. And so it's somewhere in the range of 7, 8, 10% uh, increase in mortality for every hour of antibiotic delay. And so as a pharmacist in the ER and the ICU, I can help be there to make sure that the right antibiotic is chosen as quickly as possible at the right dose, the right frequency, to help decrease the amount of time delay in between recognizing this life-threatening infection and receiving the actual antibiotic that will save them. So the key players in a medical team are your physicians, your nurses, your pharmacists, as well as any therapist you may need. A patient that comes in for an infection, the acuity of the patients is life-threatening. There's, you know, 60 different antibiotics to choose from. It's going to be much more difficult for the team to decide the best therapy for this particular patient. And so having a pharmacist there who has a specialty in critical care, we spent an extensive amount of time learning everything there is about these drugs and how they're going to interact with this specific patient. And with the specific disease state that's causing their visit, we can help optimize that therapy and pick the right one at the right time at the right dose for this specific person. Without us, the medical team is missing a key component to improve patient outcomes. They have a better chance of surviving, a better chance of recovery, a better chance of getting out of the ICU and going home with us there. So there's sort of three big components to being a critical care pharmacist that set it apart from other pharmacy practices. You have a lot of interaction with the medical team, you have a lot of high acuity, high adrenaline situations. And the third thing is the complexity of the disease states. To become a critical care pharmacist, most people have to pursue postgraduate training. So it takes an additional two years of residency. As an integral member of the medical team, I'm there to act as the drug resource or the drug expert for any questions anyone may have. And so having a direct role on helping them get through this life-threatening scenario is extremely rewarding. So here are some quick facts about Loma Linda University and our school. So we do have the largest university faith-based academic center um, and the hospital is actually right in the center of all of our eight schools, including ours. And we do have a lot of alumni um, that have graduated with us and we have a lot of connections. So Whenever we try to connect students, we, we have those contacts. Also, our average GPA for accepted students is a 3.30 GPA, but our minimum GPA is a 2.75 and above. If it falls below that, we will still consider the candidate and review um, the whole uh, documentation. And then our class sizes are small. Uh, we used to have 75 seats, now we have 55. Um, so our class sizes are pretty small in comparison to other schools. So if you enjoy having a small class environment, this would be a great school for you. So what can Loma Linda offer you? I'll go ahead and play one last video. Loma Linda University is a unique place because of the integration of faith and healthcare. 
We are located in Southern California and we are one of only two faith-based academic medical complexes in the nation. Where our mission is to continue the teaching and healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Loma Linda University has been an innovator in medical research by pioneering proton cancer treatment and infant heart transplant. And our Level 1 Trauma Center will continue to advance quality healthcare and education with our new Adult and Children's Hospital. As an academic medical complex, our eight schools are all located on the same campus as our medical center. This provides distinct opportunities for interdisciplinary work with students from all of our programs. The professors are what really makes Loma Linda special. They truly care about my success, not only academically, but also spiritually and personally. And because of the smaller class sizes, I really feel like I get personalized attention from the professors. I really enjoy the lifestyle promoted here at LU. They encourage us to live a balanced life of diet, exercise, social activities, and spiritual life. This is where our motto, to make men whole, comes from. I love exercising at the Wellness Center. They provide opportunities to de-stress and relax with friends through intramurals and exercise. And since we're only one hour from the beach and one hour from the mountains, there are all kinds of opportunities for amazing weekend adventures. I also like the opportunity to travel abroad and share what I've learned with those in need. And even here in our own community, there are many ways to get involved with outreach. Because of Loma Linda's emphasis in mission and outreach, I truly believe that my career is making a difference in the world. Loma Linda is a unique place. It's where we care more about who you are than what you know. We take this opportunity to combine faith and healthcare training to produce unique professionals. Again, we're a faith-based school, so if you want to be part of a faith-based environment, we encourage you to come to our campus. Um, you also have so many different uh, opportunities as far as going on mission trips or also being part of different organizations on our campus where you can serve our local community in San Bernardino. Again, we have a level one trauma center right in the heart of our campus. Um, so we'll constantly have students come over to the hospital in the pharmacy uh, locations and do their rotations towards the end of their uh, four-year program. Our class sizes, again, are small. Uh, it's a 10 to 1 ratio, so you'll get that one individualized counseling if needed for any of our courses. And if, uh, if, if students go on mission trips, uh, tuition is subsidized um, by going or attending one of our mission trips. We recently had one to Mexico, so that one's the close one. Uh, to where we're located, but there's many different ones um, from other countries as well. Now going into our curriculum, so we have different classes that will um, help any student go through a program to be well-rounded. So we'll go into like basic sciences and religion courses since we are a faith-based school. And um, so there's different courses that students may take, um, including administrative, in case um, someone wants to open up their own pharmacy. We also offer dual degrees that can be done simultaneously with the PharmD program. Um, we, the most common one is health professions and education. So if you're looking into teaching, that would be a great combination. Again, residency is not required unless you want to specialize in, for example, any of the categories under PGY2, um, for example, oncology, then the first year would be uh, just general practice. And then second year will actually be specialized in the area that you like to. Our admissions process, we have rolling admissions. So the sooner you apply, the better. 
And again, a minimum GPA is a 2.75 and above, but if you do fall below that, we still recommend that you apply. We need two letters of recommendation from non-family members. And then once we have all your documents through FarmCast, then we can go ahead and review your documents and then we'll determine if you have met our requirements, uh, which by the way, we don't require a bachelor's degree. Um, so if you don't have one, we would recommend that you do all of our prereqs, which are general bio, general chemistry, organic chemistry, and one physics with the lab. Um, so those are prerequisites and along with general ed classes like psychology and English, for example. Uh, but if you do meet those requirements, we'll invite you for an interview on our campus or via Zoom, and then we'll go ahead and make a decision. So we expect, or what are we looking for in a candidate? Uh, we're looking for someone who wants to be part of a faith-based institution, um, someone that has met and completed the prereqs prior to the start of their term. And also, we don't require any pharmacy experience. But if you do have, that, that will definitely be beneficial throughout your four-year program. And we do recommend that you shadow. That's something that we do have available. If you're interested on our campus, we can connect you with the appropriate person to do that. And lastly, we don't require the PCAT. So one less exam for you to take. We also wanna make you aware that we are a Hispanic Center of Excellence in Pharmacy. So we wanna, increase our pool of Hispanics in uh, Hispanic pharmacists in our area. Uh, so we have this grant that was recently awarded, which is helping us to increase that pool. We just started the process and we've given um, some scholarships to our Hispanic students, uh, first year through fourth year uh, pharmacy students. So if you're interested or identify yourself as Latino, Latina, let me know and I can share more information about this. And this concludes my presentation. The QR code that you'll see on your screen, if you go ahead and scan it, uh, we can connect and answer any questions that you may have. Again, thank you so much for your time. Hi everyone, my name is Sahara Devi. Uh, I'm the Director of Admissions here at UC San Diego Skag School of Pharmacy. Um, like Lynn, I have a presentation as well. So um, let's get started. Uh, and if I look away, it's because I have dual monitors and it's hard to uh, manage both Zoom and my presentation. Okay, so this slide is more of a general overview about our program and what you can uh, expect um, from our, um, our program. So we admit about 65 to 70 students per year, and we have um, around 54 faculty members. In your second year, so your P2 year, um, we have a very innovative curriculum where you take classes with MS1, so medical students, um, year one students, and that just helps again, with um, understanding the different um, healthcare professionals' roles. Um, we have a pass no pass uh, grading system, so you can say goodbye to all letter grades. Um, we believe that having the pass no pass system will allow students to collaborate more and not have to worry about um, their, their grades. You still have to pass all your classes. However, we um, don't want you to be focused on getting an A or A minus and stuff like that. We have very high for passing rates, we have um, pretty high uh, residency match rates as well. Our tuition is uh, substantially lower than private education. Uh, we are a, a state institution. So your patient care starts immediately in your year one, so in your P1 year. Um, we are very close to many different clinical sites, uh, research sites, and we also have the free medical clinics where it's student run and our students provide healthcare to underserved communities. We have our PharmD PhD program with biomedical sciences, and um, we have a lot of students who do um, fellowships with, for example, uh, with Janssen. Uh, we also have our novel entrepreneurship training program called BEST, and the BEST stands for Business and Entrepreneur Entrepreneurship for Scientists and Technologists, and this is a free 
uh, program available to our students. Uh, we also have um, master's programs, so the public health and drug development and program um, product management. I'm going to provide you guys with some highlights of our school and our curriculum. So this um, is a picture of our campus. This right here on this picture on the right um, is the biomedical sciences uh, building, which is right across the street from the picture on the left, which is our building Sky School of Pharmacy. Um, below on the left, you will see the special, uh, the medical education and telemedicine building. So that's where the uh, School of Medicine is. And we're right across the lawn from each other. Um, as mentioned, the presentation will go out to you guys. So these links will be made available. Um, but we're very student centered. We're research focused and we're service oriented public university. Um, we, um, UC San Diego is a $100 million landmark studies for empathy and compassion. So we love to give back to patients and the community. And again, as I mentioned, we have the free clinic, which um, gives back to underserved communities. We were ranked um, number four in public uh, best uh, in for public uh, schools, um, and we were ranked number five for best um, career placement. So we have smaller class sizes as well, and we believe that this will help with engagement and then more one-on-one -on -one faculty mentorship. And this also gives you the opportunity for more clinical shadowing opportunities and having that one-on-one -on -one relationship with your faculty, uh, which some of them will be your faculty advisor, will just provide you with a higher quality um, of you know, your academic career. And then you're able to ask those mentors for um, letters of recommendation, for uh, you know, more information about their journey into you know, the different specializations in the pharmaceutical um, careers. So we embrace diversity. We have a lot of initiatives centered around diversity and DEI, so or EDI, which is equity, diversity, and inclusion, or diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion. And um, we have SNAFA, which um, provides our current students with opportunities to give back to different communities and um, continue the work of um, pharmacy students and then working professionals. So we have uh, introductory pharmacy practice experiences, um, which is IPPEs, and the goal is to achieve practice competencies through different practice locations. Um, so this gives you experience before you go into clinical rotation in your fourth year. Um, when you have a chance to view this presentation, I highly recommend clicking on the link to learning uh, so you can learn more about the free clinic. It's a wonderful way that our students give back to the community. And um, the objective structured clinical examinations, which we like to call them the OSCEs, are really, really cool. So here at SCAGS, we have uh, paid actors uh, at the School of Medicine, and it is um, pretty much like an opportunity for our students and medical students. I believe nursing students are also involved. Um, they come into a mock hospital room and they're given a patient and they are then supposed to diagnose them, work together um, as a healthcare team. So you will start getting OSCE experiences from your P1 year. We very much believe in hands-on learning. Year two of the curriculum, as I mentioned, you take classes with the School of Med students. And um, as I mentioned to all prospective students, it's really important that not only with your prerequisite courses that you complete uh, what's the minimum requirement, but you take a little extra courses. Like if you are a chemistry major, take a little, uh, take maybe one or two extra biology courses and vice versa, because that'll help you with the curriculum. And these are just some of the advanced uh, pharmacy practice um, locations or areas that you can be placed in. So um, APP rotations are selected in, in your fall of P3 year. You um, submit a survey on what you're most interested in. And then in your uh, P4 year, then you are uh, placed in them. But everyone has to complete different blocks of uh, rotations. 
As I mentioned, we have a pass no pass system. We have our grades uh, are categorized as honors, pass, and fail. But please keep in mind that if you don't pass a class right away, you don't fail out of the program. You are given opportunity to remediate. So if you do if you don't do well on a test, then um, you can retake the test and continue with um, your cohort. We have a 98% um, on-time graduation, and we have had zero students um, leave on academic dismissal. Um, we have ranked number one for um, CPJE and NAPLEX test results. And we have um, a residency match of 84%. And this was for a class of 2021. So our unique curriculum, uh, we have our faculty mentorship, we have quarterly assessments and fourth year workshops, including like CV writing, practice interview sessions, really do help our students prepare for post-graduation. Uh, we have a smaller class size, so that gives us a lot of opportunities to really um, work with students, make sure that they're successful and feel supported throughout the four years. So I'm going to discuss a little bit about the application process. Um, as I mentioned, I am the director of admission. So I work with uh, students from the moment they express admission, uh, express uh, interest in pharmacy school up until the time, um, you know, the interview and even post, in, post um, you know, matriculation. So we require a bachelor's degree prior to, matric to matriculation. So most students will apply to pharmacy school after their junior year. So they'll go through the application process during their um, senior year. And we have a minimum GPA requirement of a 3.0 and a science GPA requirement of a 2.8. Um, if you receive a, a failing grade, like a D or F, um, please repeat it. If it's a prereq, specifically prereq, or if it's a course that's gonna stop you from graduating, you would have to repeat the course. For example, let's say you, get a D in an English class, but it has nothing to do with your degree matriculation or even with our prereqs, then uh, my suggestion is still to retake it so it can help with your GPA, but if you don't retake it, it's not going to count against you. Um, in the FarmCast application, you have an opportunity to describe um, any special life circumstances that may have been a barrier to your academic success, so I encourage uh, anyone who may feel uh, that they need to provide some details to do that. So um, FarmCast, we require the FarmCast application. FarmCast does have waivers available for their application, so uh, please feel free to reach out to them. I know the application fee can um, be pretty expensive, uh, especially when you apply to more than one school, so please reach out to FarmCast for application waivers. Um, and our the application typically goes live in mid-July. Um, you can find the application if you click, if you search FarmCast, or you can go on our website, scroll all the way down on the main page, and then click on Admissions Apply Now. What we do not require, we don't require PCAT, we don't require any additional um, applications other than the FarmCast. We don't have a supplemental application or anything like that. We don't require any additional questions. Uh, we don't require any specific undergraduate major as just as long as you complete our prereqs. Um, I have had excellent students who are, uh, who earned their bachelor's in psychology and English. And I think it's important to be well-rounded, complete your prereqs, have a um, good understanding of the sciences, and then, um, you know, do things, also pursue a major that you really are passionate about. So what do, I, what do we look for in an ideal applicant? Um, we have a holistic review on the application. So we look for enthusiasm. For, um, if you, if you um, haven't had time to explore the profession, what I recommend is maybe reaching out to faculty in that specific school and asking them about mentorship or shadowing opportunities. We look for work-life balance. Are you involved in new campus organizations? And please don't feel that you have to do everything pre-pharmacy related. Join other clubs that um, will kind of show that work-life student balance. Do you have leadership positions? And leadership should not be limited to the title. What we look for in leadership is 
what have more of the role within that title. So you can be a tutor, you can be a um, orientation leader, you can um, be a TA. So leadership really is more about what you have done versus just the title. Um, have you were you successful in your undergraduate courses, especially in your science courses? It's really important that um, you do well in your science classes because pharmacy school is it starts with your core classes from the beginning. You know, you come in and you take 16 to 18 units and you, you we really want students to have a good understanding uh, when it comes to balancing coursework. So your pathway to exploring the profession, it's really important to understand what is pharmacy. So maybe volunteering, working in a pharmacy, having pharmacy insight through um, interviewing, shadowing pharmacists. Um, what other experiences are we looking for? So you can work um, or do community service in different healthcare settings. Um, you can be part of different pre-pharmacy and student orgs, do some research, again, leadership opportunities. And please make sure in your FarmCast application that you list all of your activities post high school. Um, that will definitely help the admissions committee when reviewing your application. Um, the biggest misconception is that you must have research experience. We do, we do not require any research experience. Please note that you will obtain research experience once you matriculate into our program. Um, you have a research project due at the end of your fourth year and throughout your year one to year four, um, you will have lots of opportunities to obtain those research skills and work with your faculty advisor. So um, it's really important that you are able to balance school, professional activities, and just life in general. We don't want your whole identity to be reliant on just being a pharmacy student. It's really important to have self-care and take time to yourself. So we have our student affairs team is does very well when it comes to being responsive to mental health and having resources available to students. We have a wellness advisor, Dr. Shapiro, who is available 24 seven for student related issues. Um, again, when you guys have access to these slides, I encourage you to take a look at our virtual tours. And um, I just want to end this with um, our residency and fellowship locations. Uh, my presentation is pretty long and I don't want to go through um, all of it. I want to give you some time to take a look at it on your free time. But these are some of the locations that um, our students have, have gone to. So uh, one of the last things I want to uh, mention to you all is um, don't feel limited or feel that you're not uh, a competitive applicant. I feel that, you know, many students may have a misconception about themselves and because they've learned about what their other friends have done to get into pharmacy school. Please feel free to reach out. It, you know, we're happy to give you a course evaluation, let you know where you're at, how competitive, you know, you are, what you can work on. So. I really want um, you all to take the time um, to reach out to advisors. We're happy to help. And um, if anyone's interested in reaching out to me, I will put my email in the chat and I appreciate your time. Um, a question, uh, Tuan, do you want us to answer questions now or later? Yeah, actually, uh, we actually have time for Q&A at this time, okay? okay? And it looks like there's already one or two questions in the chat. Um, yeah, actually, let's just start with one of the questions I see really quick here, okay? Um, does a DRF in a non-transferable intermediate college algebra course at a community college affect GPA? Uh, basically, uh, does FarmCast uh, have something similar to how uh, MCAS does GPA calculations? So I believe FarmCast calculates all grades, regardless of like introductory or not. Um, now they calculate grades in um, so they have like uh, math grade organic chem you know all of that but if that grade doesn't impact your overall gpa so even if you got a d and you still have a 3.3 then you're fine um and if it's not a prereq class then it shouldn't impact our decision we have had students who didn't pass a class that wasn't that wasn't a prereq um, and also didn't stop them from getting their degree and they still still got into pharmacy school 
Let me see if there's any other questions. At this time, it looks like there's only that question, but uh, th there looks like to be another one question right now. Uh, do you have any special admissions for students with an with a MD from another country? Is this specifically for SCAGS or um, Loma Linda? I'm uh, actually, I think it's probably for both of you. So okay. if you have any um, special admissions or consideration for students with basically advanced degrees, uh, for sure. example, uh, whether it be a pharmacy or a medical degree from another country. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'll just go over it real quick and I'll link our website, but pretty much um, you would have to first ensure that you're a U.S. citizen or permanent resident and then take classes and then send us your transcript, we'll evaluate it. And then from there, take classes um, at a four-year university or an extension campus. And usually the courses you're taking are like prereq related courses. Um, and then um, you can apply to our program. But those students, uh, specifically in that situation, will work uh, very closely with myself and um, Christine, who's also on our admissions team, to make sure that they have um, met all the eligibility requirements. But I will send more information in, in the chat. Lynn? Yeah, same for Loma Linda, same process. We would go ahead and review your transcript and then look at where you stand. And same, you would probably have to go to a community college or a four-year college uh, or university to fulfill the prerequisites for our program. Okay. So this would be a general question, but also if you could answer specifically for your uh, two schools. Uh, does pharmacy school require letters of recommendation? And if so, how many? When we have uh, Lynn, would you start with that? Sure. <laughs> So for our pharmacy school, we require two letters of recommendation. If you send more than two, that's totally fine. We'll continue and add it to your file, but it's two. And then for us, we require three and we have um, a set of uh, recommenders that we don't approve. So again, I'll, I'll put that in our, um, I'll put that in the chat, but I think with FarmCats, you can submit up to four letters. So if you submit up to four, we'll accept that as well. And if you have any issues with getting letters of rec, just reach out to us. Yeah, and that sounds about right, because I've seen uh, both uh, Western and also um, for San Francisco, I've helped a few a friend of mine uh, years ago apply, and it was between two to three letters of recommendation. Mm -hmm. So participants, if you have any other questions, please either put it into the chat or unmute yourself. It looks like there's a new question on here. It says, um, question about clinical experience. Does hospital volunteering work count uh, as uh, in the ed, in education count? Work in the ed. I'm not sure about the last part, but basically I think they're asking about um, clinical experience and does hospital count towards that? Um, for us, we have accepted, so we don't have a requirements on um, having certain clinical experience. It's highly desired, but not required. And um, if you have experience working in a healthcare setting, not specifically pharmacy, that's fine as well. Um, but just put it on your application. All experience yeah. counts. <laughs> yeah, we, we agree as well with that. Uh, we don't require the experience, but of course, if you do have it, I'm sure it will be beneficial throughout your program. So not a requirement, but we do recommend shadowing if you like to do that. That'd be, that'd be great. But generally speaking, I know that pretty much now, um, any type of experience where you are working with others, the public, within communication, because I know that for within uh, pharmacy school, I think that's one of the really strong skill sets that, that, that they're looking at uh, for you in your evaluation of pharmacy school. So any opportunity for you to basically improve your communication skills in ideally a medical setting, but if not, you know, in other settings, uh, in order to, to do that, it re re would really help out both within your application itself and also within the interview. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, looks like we do have about five more minutes. So we do have time for one or two more questions. 
And you know what? Actually, I do have a question. Okay. Um, you know, I've had a few friends of mine go to pharmacy school, and I know that there's always that last year for, of rotations. Okay. So for your uh, campuses, do you do those rotations a little bit earlier on, or is it only within the last year? And how does that work? Lynn, you want to go first? Oh, sure. Thank you. Uh, so our students will start doing rotations right at the beginning, but it won't be as heavy loaded as, for example, their fourth year. Mm -hmm. Their fourth year will be completely rotation and different areas so they can figure out which pathway they would like to go into. Um, but at the beginning, it'd be a small part of their curriculum. Same with us too. Um, we have the, as I mentioned, the introductory pharmacy experiences, the IPPEs, and it's they take a few weeks during their summer, sprinkled throughout the curriculum, and then fourth year is completely rotations. So there's a question on, I think it might be from a counselor. Should I suggest for uh, students to take a foreign language? Probably be fluent in a second language to be a little bit more competitive. Your overall thoughts for that? Maybe Sahara? Sorry. Yeah, so it really depends. Um, I always tell students it doesn't hurt to take a foreign language, even if it, you know, if it completes or if it helps with your GE, that's great. Um, we also have Spanish for healthcare professionals as an elective here. So if you are aren't able to take a you know foreign language course in undergrad but are interested um, as you know in taking it in uh, as an elective you can do that as well so um, it's really up to a student I would say yeah we it would benefit especially in our area San Bernardino Valley there's a lot of uh, a large Hispanic population. So if we do have a student that speaks Spanish as well, that will definitely benefit during rotation, especially because a lot of them are within our area and close by. We have a lot of Spanish speaking patients. Um, so I think it would be a plus, but again, it depends on the on the student too, not a requirement. So there's also another question about um, academic probation. So if a student is placed on academic probation, whether it be at the community college or at the university, okay, then probably gets off of it. Does that impact their admissions and how um, the admissions committee would view, uh, would view that? So Lynn, maybe you could start with that. Sure. My understanding, um, I would have to double check, but my understanding is if a student does go into academic probation, they get um, like a pause within their program, and they'll, they'll have a year to come back and resume for the following school year. For example, I, if they started this year um, and then they didn't do too well, um, we're kind of a semester quarter system. Um, so if they don't do well, they'll go on a pause and then they have that next year to come back. Okay. Actually, uh, if you don't mind me clarifying, and maybe I was a little bit unclear, it's actually more so if the student is on probation while at the, at the community college or at the university, okay, how will that impact their potential admissions to your pharmacy school? Oh, I see. Sorry about that. Uh, we would have to review it within the committee. So if a student does uh, have that academic probation from another institution coming into ours, we would review each. Um, so it, the recommendation letters would come in to review as well as um, the transcript. So we would have to run it through the admissions committee and then we'll make a decision from there if we would like to invite them for an interview and to see what may have happened. Um, and then we'll make the decision from there. Sarah? So we have somewhat of a similar process. So if, when I review applications and I see someone was on academic probation, um, I look for trajectory and I look to see if they retook those classes. And if I if I don't see too much of a trajectory, then I will um, uh, then I will look for any explanation in the special life circumstances section. It will give me a little bit more insight in the situation. Then I'll escalate that application to our dean and um, defer to them about how we should move forward. Um, 
we understand that students may go on academic probation, uh, you know, during one or two semesters. Um, but as long as there's trajectory and there's explanation on why that happened, I think for the most part, the admissions committee uh, will be understanding of the situation. Yeah, and actually, that's my similar experience with a lot of the medical school applicants too. Let's yeah. just say that you were that community college student who was a swirler and who went through multiple community colleges, didn't do well here or there. Okay, but then uh, you know you were able to clean up your transcript able to transfer on okay and at the university you were spotless you know you did basically a 3.7 gpa and everything's you know, nice and clean therefore they could see that within your last basically you know um, two years at the university and that one year at community college where you did really well to clean up everything your trajectory as sarah was saying is really on the upward trend and within those three years of showing consistent um grades and so forth they know that you can still do very well and would be a competitive candidate even though maybe your overall may be a little bit lower on three two so it's not just about a pure gpa number but it's overall it's uh, gpa within your math science and physics uh prerequisites uh it's basically trends in your gpa your last 60 units and what sahara was saying is in context to everything because a 3.5 gpa the student with has no responsibilities who's 20 versus a student who's 30 and is working 30 hours per week providing for family and is still able to be in a 3.5 those are really truly two different types of students there absolutely and that's where the holistic process comes in it's very hard to compare um, applicants and that's why I always tell students put everything on your application let us know and learn about you before we just make a, a preconceived judgment of like oh they have a 3.5 and or they're 3.1 so everything counts put it all on there 